Hi guys, this is C.A. Balakrishna from lecturepedia.in. Uh, how are you? Hope you people are doing well. Even I am fantastic. Now in this class we will be revising Competition Act 2002. In the previous class we have revised RERA. It was around 40 minutes. And even we will be trying to complete this Competition Act within one hour. Okay. Now Competition Act 2002. This act has come into existence in 2002. Now, before 2002, there was a particular act by name MRTP Act 1969. Okay, Monopolies Restrictive Trade Practices Act. Now, the Competition Act was brought into existence by removing MRTP Act. Why MRTP Act was removed? Because there were various uh, uh, defects in the MRTP Act. Okay, in uh, 1992, our country implemented these L, uh, LPG schemes. Now the MRTP Act was not in promotion of the LPG schemes. Okay, basically MRTP Act doesn't work for promotion of competition. Okay, it works for restricting the monopolies. Okay, so this act was removed and in its place Competition Act 2002 was brought. Okay, which promotes the competition. Okay, now structure of this competition act basically in this uh, entire competition act can be divided into two parts one is uh, prohibited activities and on the other hand provisions related to competition commission of india and some other miscellaneous provisions now in our examination from this prohibited activities we will be getting uh, almost 70 percentage of the questions okay most of the questions will be from prohibited activities only okay so this part would be important for the examination and here in this part there are only four sections that will be covered okay first of all there are three types of prohibited activities uh, under competition act what are they first one anti-competitive agreements which will be dealt by section number three next abuse of dominant position dealt by section number four and the regulation of combination okay section number five and six uh, basically section number five says what are uh, what is the combination means okay uh, the thresholds will be given in section number five and how the combinations are regulated by cca that will be dealt in section number six okay now you might be getting a doubt what is this cca basically cca is a competition commission of india okay the authority under this competition act is cca we have seen that in the RERA Act, the authority is RERA. The name of the authority is also RERA. But here, in this Competition Act, the name of the authority is CCI. Okay, Competition Commission of India. Hope this is clear. Now, as we have seen that there are three types of prohibited activities. The first one is anti-competitive agreements. Okay, we will be starting with that anti-competitive agreements. Basically, these anti-competitive agreements are void. Okay, these anti-competitive agreements are void. But first of all, we will understand what are agreements and which type of agreements will be anti-competitive in nature. Basically, agreements can be either written or oral. And any agreement which causes appreciable adverse effect on competition in India will be anti-competitive agreement. Okay. If the agreement causes appreciable adverse effect on competition in India, then that type of agreement will be anti-competitive agreement. Now, there are two types of anti-competitive agreements. First one is horizontal anti-competitive agreement. Next one is vertical anti-competitive agreement. Now, what are these horizontal anti-competitive agreements? See, if agreements are entered by businesses at the same level, then they will be known as horizontal and anti-competitive agreements. Let's say, for example, the manufacturers enters some agreement then that would be horizontal agreement okay if retailers enter some agreement that will be horizontal agreement okay if uh, distributors enter some agreement that would be horizontal agreement because the people at same level of business are entering into agreement okay that is horizontal anti-competitive agreement coming to vertical agreements vertical agreements will be entered by people at different levels of business okay manufacturers and retailers manufacturers distributors distributors retailers okay those types of agreements will be uh, vertical agreements now 
regarding horizontal agreements there is a presumption okay the competition commission of india always presumes that these horizontal agreements are always anti competitive in nature unless proved not to be anti competitive in nature hope this is clear okay now whenever a horizontal agreement is entered the cci will presume that that horizontal agreement is anti competitive in nature okay the parties have to prove that no this agreement is not anti competitive in nature because it is not creating any uh, adverse effect on competition in india okay that has to be proved by the parties whereas in case of vertical agreements the cci will not presume that the vertical agreements are uh, anti competitive in nature okay vertical agreements are not anti competitive in nature unless proved to be anti competitive in nature okay just opposite to horizontal anti competitive agreements hope this is clear now there are types of horizontal anti competitive agreements and types of vertical anti competitive agreements now let us see them moving to types of horizontal anti competitive agreements they can be price fixation agreements that means all the sellers in the market they will uh, come to a agreement that they will sell at same price okay that would be price fixation agreement second production limitation agreement okay they will come to a agreement that we will produce only this much amount of goods so that artificial uh, you know demand will be created for the goods in the market if the production is reduced the demand will automatically increase so to create artificial uh, demand or artificial lack of supply in the market this type of production limitation agreements will be entered next market sharing agreement see the sellers or the manufacturers they will enter into agreement among themselves that one manufacturer will operate in south one will operate in north one will operate in west this is known as market sharing agreement next bid rigging agreement basically in this bid rigging agreement the participants they will collude among each other so that they will allow only one particular participant to win the bid at a lower price okay that would be bid rigging agreement now regarding these types of agreement we almost spent uh, one to one and a half hour in the regular class but uh, since it being a revision class uh, i can't spend more than this uh, this much of time next coming to cartel now cartel is also one type of horizontal anti competitive agreements now basically cartel can be in the form of price fixation agreement or in the form of production limitation agreement or in the form of market sharing agreement okay cartel can be in either of these three forms but the speciality of cartel is that in the cartel there will be more people involved okay some 6 to 7 parties will come together and they will form a cartel okay the difference between cartel and this individual agreement is that in those individual agreements only some parties will will be involved okay only two or three parties they will involve in type of uh, in the individual agreements whereas in case of cartel more people will be involved so this is clear next moving to types of vertical anti competitive agreements basically there are five uh, types of vertical anti competitive agreements first one tie in agreement uh, regarding this tie in agreement the seller will say that if you want to purchase this product along with this product you should also purchase this product only then i will sell this uh, product to you okay that will be tie in agreement next exclusive supply agreement regarding this we discussed the example of this uh, motor vehicle showrooms okay the maruti suzuki showroom it sells only vehicles of maruti suzuki okay that would be example of exclusive supply agreement okay if you have taken the regular class there we have discussed the example okay you can uh, see in your book you can find it next exclusive distribution agreement for this we have seen example of mrf tires and seat tires okay you can uh, see in your book you'll find the example next refusal to deal for this we have discussed the ex- example of this intel processor okay next resale price maintenance so here we discussed the example of mrf tires okay wherein resale price has to be maintained okay you can uh, you know refer your book you will find those examples next 
now there are certain type of agreements which will never be called as anti competitive agreements okay for example agreements which are related to which are falling under copyright act trademark act or designs act okay those agreements will never be called as anti competitive agreement okay we have seen the example of apple incorporation okay apple company example next agreements related to export from india okay if you are entering into any agreement related to export of goods or services out of india then that agreement might create appreciable adverse effect on competition outside india but not in india okay here cci is concerned only if appreciable adverse effect on competition is created in india okay in case of export it might create appreciable effect on competition outside india thereby even agreements related to export are also uh, not treated as anti competitive agreements okay these are two exemptions for anti competitive agreements okay by this anti competitive agreement section number 3 is completed now moving to section number 4 abuse of dominant position we will see that from the ppt i guess you all have those ppts uh, i have shared in the telegram channel you can download them from the telegram channel now section 4 abuse of dominant position first of all here in section 4 you have to remember that having dominant position is not prohibited but abusing that dominant position is prohibited okay now how the cci will decide whether the dominant position is being abused or not for this there are three steps first of all the person should have dominant position okay only if he is having a dominant position he can abuse that dominant position if he is not at all having a dominant position how he can abuse the dominant position so the cci will check first of all whether that person is having dominant position or not okay to check this dominant position there are certain 12 factors given okay based on those factors the cci will check whether the person is having dominant position or not now dominant position has to be checked in a relevant market okay now there are basically two types of relevant markets one is relevant product market one is relevant geographic market okay now the cci will determine in which market the person is having a dominant position okay once cci has determined that this entity or the enterprise or the business is having dominant position in a particular relevant market now it will check whether that enterprise is abusing its dominant position or not okay like this there are three steps first step determine the relevant market second step determine whether the entity is having dominant position or not third step determine whether that dominant position is being abused by the entity or not hope this is clear this is how the cci will determine whether the entity is abusing its dominant position or not now to determine this there are certain factors let us see first of all uh, here are the steps three steps now for determining the relevant market there are two types of relevant markets one is relevant product market one is relevant geographic market okay now these will be determined based on factors to determine the relevant product market of the entity the cci will consider these factors and to determine relevant geographic market the cci will consider these matters uh, these uh, factors okay it has decided the relevant market after that uh, it will see whether the entity is having a dominant position or not now for example let's say in that relevant market the entity is having 80% share in that market and remaining competitors are having just 20% share in this case it is clear that this entity is having dominant position in that market okay like this there are some 12 factors which will be considered by the cci okay based on all these factors together the cci will determine whether that person is having dominant position or not okay if the cci founds that that person is having dominant position okay it is not prohibited to have dominant position cci will not take any action it will further check whether that person is abusing its dominant position or not okay now to determine whether that uh, entity is abusing its dominant position or not cci will see whether that person is charging any unfair uh, you know unfair prices see 
any discriminatory condition or changing uh, charging any uh, un unfair prices that will be checked next whether that entity is limiting the production or technological development in that industry okay whether it is causing hindrances to the development of uh, uh, technology in that industry in that case it will be deemed that that entity is abusing the dominant position next it will see whether that entity is indulging in any fraudulent practices okay so that the new entrants will not be able to enter into the market okay you can say that creating some barriers so that the new entry the new entrants cannot enter into the market okay if the entity which is having dominant position is doing these type of activities then it will be deemed that that entity is abusing its dominant position okay now to perform this investigation of whether the entity is abusing its dominant position or not and whether the any agreements that are entered by the entity are anti competitive nature uh, or not there is certain investigation procedure prescribed what is that investigation procedure the cci will follow let us see that c inquiry into agreement or dominant position c in section number 3 we have seen that anti competitive agreements are void in section number 4 we have seen that abusing dominant position is not allowed now how the cci will know whether that entity the agreements that are entered by that entity are anti competitive or not whether the entity is abusing its dominant position or not the cci will conduct the enquiry okay based on the enquiry cci will determine okay the competition commission of india will determine whether the agreements are anti competitive or any abuse of dominant position has taken place now the procedure for conducting this inquiry first of all cci will determine prima facie case exists or not okay now any party okay either central government or state government or any public can complain to the competition commission of india against any particular entity stating that that particular entity has entered into an anti competitive agreement you please uh, check this matter and uh, take the appropriate action like this complaint can be received by cci or cci can suo moto initiate a inquiry okay suo moto initiation of inquiry is also possible for cci now based on this complaint or suo moto initiation cci will first of all decide will first of all determine whether there is any prima case uh, prima facie case exists or not if there is a prima facie case yes or there is no prima facie case if there is no prima facie case then straight away the matter will be closed in case there exists a prima facie case then cci will order director general to conduct the investigation into that agreement or into that dominant position okay now see the director general will conduct the in uh, investigation based on investigation director general submitted a report to the cci stating that there has been a contravention or there has not been a contravention in case there is a contravention then cci may cause further inquiry to be conducted and later on it will dispose the matter how it will dispose the matter it will pass the order of cease or desist okay cease or desist order will be passed that means that horizontal anti competitive agreement or any vertical anti competitive agreement you have entered na that is void i am cancelling that uh, agreement from now that agreement should not be you know implemented like this cease cease means stop okay and also for that uh, dominant position you are abusing the dominant position na from now onwards you should not abuse the dominant position stop abusing the dominant position like this cease and desist order will be passed and also penalty will be imposed okay the amount of penalty can be up to 10% of the average turnover of preceding three financial years see here it is average turnover turnover of some large entities will be in crores okay of that turnover 10% will be imposed as a penalty it means a very huge penalty okay now that is the situation when the director general gives report stating that yes there is a contravention 
in case director general gives a report stating that there is no contravention in that case the cci will ask the central government or the state government or the uh, the public who has given complaint to the cci asking for objections okay our director general is saying that there is no contravention but you have given the complaint uh, against that entity okay the central government state government or any public you have given the complaint okay now do you agree with the decision of the director general or do you have any objections like the cci will ask that person who has given the complaint now after collecting the objections of that person cci will come to a conclusion okay now cci feels that commission agrees with the director general okay cci also based on the objections received and the, the decision of the director general by comparing this cci also feels that yes what the director general saying is correct there is no contravention in this case if the cci feels so then the matter will be closed if the cci feels that no director general saying there is no contravention but there is a contravention i feel there is a contravention in that case cci will ask to conduct the investigation or the inquiry again okay further inquiry cause further inquiry and based on further inquiry if there is contravention this will be done if there is no contravention the matter will be disposed hope this is clear okay this is how cci will carry on the inquiry related to anti competitive agreement section 3 or abuse of dominant position section 4 okay section 3 section 4 done move into section number 5 related to combinations now see combinations now how combinations will affect the competition let's say for example see in case of combination most of the people will be confused so i will go a little bit slow here okay now combination let's say there is jio there is airtel okay presently these are the two huge players or only two players in the market of telecom now suddenly let's say these two players decided to merge now tell me whether this merger will be having effect on the competition in india or not yes there will be a huge effect of this merger on the competition in telecom sector okay thereby cci decided to regulate the mergers okay basically in this chapter we will be calling it as combinations okay basically there are three types of uh, activities that will be coming under combination see first of all first is acquisition in case of acquisition a limited will acquire b limited and after acquisition completed b limited will not exist okay b limited will not exist a limited will only be present that is acquisition next merger in case of merger a limited b limited will merge together and ab limited will be formed and amalgamation in case of amalgamation a limited b limited will amalgamate and a new company c limited will be formed okay now these three are the types of combinations now these will be called as combination only if they meet the thresholds see now acquisition merger amalgamation these are given those names only okay acquisition merger amalgamation once any of these meets the thresholds given here then they becomes combination as per competition act hope this is clear now when will they become combination let us see now a limited b limited a limited acquired b limited or let's say a, a limited merged with b limited forming ab limited now in this case to call this transaction as a combination there is certain threshold given now first of all threshold is related to turnover and assets okay there is certain amount of turnover given there is certain amount of threshold given okay, uh, okay. based on the turnover and assets we will decide whether it will be a combination or not now firstly related to resulting company 
ओके इंडियन ऑपरेशन इंडिया प्लस वर्ल्ड वाइड ऑपरेशन ओके ना ए लिमिटेड मर्जड वित् बी लिमिटेड फार्मिंग ए बी लिमिटेड ना आफ्टर मर्जर टेकिन प्लेस द इंडियन ऑपरेशन आफ् ए बी लिमिटेड टर्न ओवर असेट्स वील चेक ओके वील सी द क्रैटीरिया इफ द क्रैटीरिया इज एक्सीडेड देन दिस् वि कॉलड ऐस ए कांबिनेशन और इंडिया प्लस वर्ल्ड वाइड ऑपरेशन टर्न ओवर असेट्स इफ दट क्रैटीरिया एक्सीडेड then this will be called as combination now we will see the criteria okay see see this first portion threshold above which cci approval is required now operations in india okay ab limiteds operations in india assets exceed 2000 crore or turnover exceed 6000 crore if any of this is satisfied then that merger becomes a combination once it becomes a combination it requires approval of cca okay what is the effect of becoming combination the effect of becoming combination is that it will require approval of cca okay if it is not a combination if it is below this thresholds then approval of cca is not required so this is clear in the same way here you can keep or operations in world uh, worldwide and india together taken assets are greater than 1000 million dollars of which indian assets must be at least 1000 crores or turnover greater than 3000 million dollars of which indian assets uh, indian turnover must be at least 3000 crores okay you need not by heart these uh, limits okay since it is a open book you can just understand how these limits have to be checked that would be enough okay this is related to this criteria is related to newly formed entity or there is also another criteria okay if this criteria is not satisfied you should also check another criteria okay if any of these criteria satisfies then it becomes a combination okay first of all you have checked the first criteria okay for the resultant company you have checked whether the thresholds are meeting no thresholds are not met not met you should not decide that it is not a combination you should also check another criteria what is that criteria related to let me tell you now this a limited is there na this a limited merged with b limited forming ab limited now basically just a second yeah now this a limited in this a limited there is a company by name c limited okay c limited is holding 26% voting rights of a limited or C Limited is having the power to appoint more than half of the board of directors of A Limited. Okay, in this case, in this case, this will be called as a group. Okay, this will be called as a group. So this is clear. Now, since A Limited merged with B Limited and formed AB Limited, this AB Limited. plus c limited okay here because c limited is holding this 26% or the half of the board of directors appointment right so this ab limited and c limited this will be a group this becomes a group automatically so you should also check the indian operation okay indian operations turnover assets of this entire group okay ab limited plus c limited also you should check and worldwide and india okay worldwide turnover assets so this is clear that is second criteria see entire group after combination operations only in india assets greater than 8000 crore turnover greater than 24000 crores and operation in and outside india that is worldwide assets greater than 4000 million dollars of which at least 1000 crore in india or turnover greater than 
12,000 million dollar of which at least 3,000 crores must be in India. So, this is clear. Once these thresholds are met, that type of acquisition merger becomes a combination as per competition act. Once it becomes a combination, you should make application to CCI asking for approval under section 6. Okay. Under section 5, we have seen whether it is a combination or not. Now, under section 6, if it becomes a combination as per section 5, you will give application or you will ask CCI asking for approval. Okay. Now, let us see the section number 6. However, there are certain exemptions in, in section number 5. What are the exemptions? That means, even though the criteria is met, these type of transactions will not be a combination. What are they? See, no permission from CCI required for a combination of regional rural banks. Okay, If there is any merger or amalgamation or acquisition of regional rural banks is taking place, then even though the criteria, the threshold is met, that type of acquisition merger will not be treated as a combination. The same is in the case of acquisition of nationalized banks. Okay, Even there is any acquisition merger of nationalized banks, it will not be treated as a combination. And the same is for public sector enterprises operating in oil and gas sectors. Okay, For these three, even though the criteria, the threshold is met, it will be not treated as a combination. Now, there is another exemption, this one. This is important. This exemption is important. What it says? Now, a limited acquiring b limited okay in this case if assets of b limited okay here you can write assets assets not more than 350 crore or turnover not more than 1000 crore okay if any of these two criteria is met then even though the threshold is met it will not be treated as a combination that means the assets of acquiree company are less than 350 crores or turnover of acquiree company or less than 1000 crores then that type of transaction okay acquisition merger will not be treated as a combination even if the overall threshold is met hope this is clear okay this exemption is important okay next moving to section number six first of all section number six uh, says that no combination must be entered which causes appreciable adverse effect on competition in india this is a general rule you should not enter into any combination which causes appreciable adverse effect on competition in india okay section 6 also says that if you are falling under the combination limits of section 5 then you should make application to cci asking for permission of cci regarding this merger okay now when the application should be made now regarding this merger in the board meeting you will pass a board resolution now within 30 days from the date of that board resolution you should make application to cci now most of the students will be getting this doubt that in the institute material it is given as seven days but uh, that seven days is before amendment but uh, it has been amended in you know, 2007 only okay so now it is 30 days and uh, you'll also be getting a doubt that in institutes material they are uh, they will say he may at its option file with cci for uh, permission there the term may at his option is used even that has been amended in 2007 only okay that has to be replaced with shell okay application for approval with cci must be filed once the transaction becomes a combination okay hope so this is clear and this uh, combina combination must not be affected uh, with within 210 days from the date of filing the application with cci now once the application is filed with CCI asking for approval. How CCI will proceed with that application? There is a procedure. Okay. CCI will conduct the investigation. Let us see. Investigation of combination. Now, here we need to read 
all these four sections together. See, now A limited, B limited, they are entering into combination. So, they made an application with CCI asking for permission. Now, how the CCI will deal with this application of this, uh, you know, companies which are going to merge. That will be dealt here. Or, A limited, B limited, they merged. Okay. They have not given any application to CCI asking for approval. Okay. Without giving uh, or without taking approval of CCI, they themselves merged. Now, in this case, CCI can sue motor conduct an investigation into this merger. Okay. Even that process also, same process. Okay. Now, we will see. First of all, notice to CCI under section 6 subsection 2 will be given. Okay. Section 6 subsection 2 is asking CCI to grant the permission. Okay. To this merger. That is notice to CCI under section 6 subsection 2. Once notice is given, what the CCI will do? CCI will see prima facie whether this combination is causing any appreciable adverse effect on the combination uh, on the competition in India or not. Okay. That will be seen by CCI. And CCI decides that combination causes at appreciable adverse effect on competition or it causes no appreciable adverse effect on competition okay if it is not causing any appreciable adverse effect on competition means cci will happily approve the combination but the problem arises when this combination is causing a appreciable adverse effect on competition in india in that case what it will do is it will issue a show cause notice to the parties asking them why I should not conduct an investigation into your combination. Okay. I feel that your combination is causing appreciable adverse effect on competition in India. Tell me why I should not investigate your combination. Like this, the CCI will give show cause notice and will ask those parties to reply within 30 days. Okay. And will ask to respond within 30 days. After giving this show cause notice, CCI will also ask its director general to prepare a report on this combination okay i want to know all the facts related to this combination we prepare a report like this it will order its uh, director general okay however it is not mandatory that it has to order cci may at its option it can order a report from director general now once the parties have given their response and the director general has given his report what the cci will do is within seven days of response from the parties CCI can ask to public details of combination for public view within 10 days. Okay. Now, this uh, parties have given response to the SOCAS notice. Okay. And the director general has also given the report. Now, CCI will ask the parties, you are entering into the combination. Na? All the details relating to your combination, you make them available in the public domain. Okay, you make them available to the public so that the public will respond. Public, if public are having any obligations or having any objections relating to the combination, they will respond. Okay, like this, the CCA will order those parties. Okay, they will publish those details in the public domain. Now, public can provide objections within 15 days from the uh, date of publishing the details. Within 15 days, public, if they are having any objections related to that combination they can give response within 15 days now after completion of 15 days once receiving the all the objections of the public cci may call for additional information within 15 days after expiry of above 15 days okay after expiry of 15 days in further 15 days cci can ask the parties who are entering into combination to provide such further additional information as required by cci okay parties shall furnish such further information within further 15 days okay they have furnished once the entire information is received by cci now cci within 45 days will pass any of these three orders see now based on all the information that the cci collected and all the objections received from the public and based on the report of the director general cci decides that there is no appreciable adverse effect on competition. In that case, approve the combination. Okay. If there is appreciable adverse effect on competition, then reject the combination. These two, okay. Third one, CCA feels that there is appreciable adverse effect on competition, but 
we can make some modifications to this combination okay by making some modifications we can remove that appreciable adverse effect so cci will propose to the parties i want to make these modifications to your combination whether you will agree to these modifications or not like this cci will ask the parties now the parties if they say that okay cci we will agree to your modifications we will make these modifications then happily the combination will be approved okay the problem arises when the parties don't agree with the modifications now let's say cci has given three modifications to the combination okay you change this one you change this one you change this one parties say that okay we will change this one we will change this one but this one we don't agree okay this one we don't agree we don't want to change in that case parties have to within 30 days file uh, this uh, amendment within 30 days file amendment to the modification okay they don't want to change this third point na? so they have to convey it to the cci saying that we don't want to change this uh, third point now if cci agrees with what has been uh, said by the parties then cci will approve the combination if cci is not satisfied with what has been said by the parties cci will reject the combination okay this is how the entire investigation process will take place now there are uh, certain important points related to cci competition commission of india now who will be present in this competition commission of india there will be chairman and there will be some members now what will be the salary that will be given to the chairman 4 lakhs per month for members 3 lakh 75 thousand per month now how this members and the chairperson will be appointed to cci basically central government will appoint these members and uh, uh, chairperson based on the recommendation of selection committee okay okay the same is given here and tenure the tenure of this chairperson and members will be five years tenure or the age of 65 years whichever is earlier so oh, this is clear okay uh, in the rera act also the same was the tenure okay so by this i have covered almost all the important provisions of competition act okay and uh, if you wanted to purchase regular classes, you can visit our website lecturepedia.in and you can place your order. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.